when I tell you the price, I'm pretty sure you're just gonna be like, I cannot believe you paid that. Ooh, can you see that? This is turning into a car mukbang. <laughs> We're gonna give it a nine. You know why? Because nowhere else has this drink. Hi everyone, today we are in San Francisco again because you all really love the trying every boba spot in San Francisco series that I'm doing. So this is part three and I also put a poll on my Instagram asking if you would want part three to be specialty drinks or brown sugar boba drinks. And specialty drinks won by a lot, but I got so many requests of people saying to do both and brown sugar boba itself got a bunch of votes. So I think it's safe to say that there will be a part four coming with brown sugar boba drinks. To make sure you don't miss out on that, make sure you hit that subscribe button below, turn on the bell so that you get notified right when it uploads. And I have some exciting news. Since it's December, I'm doing Vlogmas, but I'll be posting three times a week is my goal, but please forgive me if I cannot keep up with that because each video takes me like four to five hours to film and then like 15 plus hours to edit. So if you have any ideas for videos you wanna see from Vlogmas, then definitely leave them in the comments down below. Anyway, I've been talking for so long, so let's get into this trying every boba shop in SF part three. Okay, so we just stopped by our first place, which is Simple Tea House, and I just randomly found this on Yelp, but I saw that they have this matcha Oreo brulee drink. It has like the creme brulee all around the cup. You can lightly see like a green color, but it looks pretty, pretty light green. And then also the Oreo crumbs, and there's some boba at the bottom as well. Mmm. Mmm. Well, it's like I'm drinking a cookies and cream drink. The boba is pretty good. It's like chewy, not too hard. And surprisingly, the Oreo and boba go really well together. But I'm gonna try to get some of this creme brulee that's on the side because I feel like I haven't really been able to taste it. I don't know. It's kind of hard to distinguish the creme brulee from the rest of the drink because I feel like they just kind of smear it around the cup and then it kind of just mixes in with the drink. Like I'm not getting any creme brulee like pudding texture. Hello, I am a mess, but I just wanted to pop on here because I forgot to explain the rating system for this video since it's not jasmine milk tea. We're having a different rating system this time. And basically I have two categories, one being specialty slash aesthetic. This is kind of joke category rating type thing, but the real rating category will be the taste. Those are the two categories. Let's get back into the video. Okay, so for the aesthetic slash specialty category, I do think this is pretty specialty and the aesthetic was nice. I think I would give it like an eight. And for taste, I think I would give it like a seven. Like I do think it tastes good, but I think the matcha, you really can't taste it like at all. The fact that I can't really taste creme brulee or matcha, I have to like dock some points. So seven for the taste, but we have plenty more to go to. So let's head to the second stop. All right, so for the second stop, we went to Tea Hut, but this time I went to their new location on Ocean Avenue and I got the cheese dragon fruit. Now this is actually quite expensive. When I tell you the price, I'm pretty sure you're just gonna be like, I cannot believe you paid that. But this thing was $8.50. That's probably one of the most expensive boba drinks I've ever gotten, but I assume it's probably because of the dragon fruit is more expensive or something. So this drink has dragon fruit, of course, tea, and also the cheese foam on top. And when you go to Tea Hut, you definitely don't have to get this like expensive drink. I really love their other fruity drinks, like the strawberry energy, which is basically like this, but with strawberry. Since this is a cheese foam drink, you know we're gonna have to try it at a 45 degree angle and sip it so we get some of the cheese foam and some of the tea. Ooh, wow. The tea flavor is very strong. I actually was not expecting that. And the cheese foam is really, really good. I think they complement each other really well in this drink. Now I'm gonna go ahead and mix it all together. So then it kind of creates like a yogurty or even like kind of a milkshake type of flavor because the cheese foam is really, really creamy. Wow, it's such a nice bright fuchsia color. This is so pretty. Ooh, 
You can definitely taste the dragon fruit and it mixes so well with the cheese foam and it just makes this really nice creamy drink and you still also get the flavor of the tea. I think in general the flavor of dragon fruit is kind of more on the mild side but it has this like nice sweetness to it and it definitely comes through in this drink. For aesthetic slash specialty, I think I would rate this like pretty high. I don't see this drink very often at all. So I think I would give it like an eight. And in terms of taste, I think I would give it like a seven or an eight. But the thing is that I probably won't get it very often or this is probably the last time I'm gonna get it. It's just really, really expensive and I can't get over that. So <laughs> I'm just gonna slowly enjoy this, remembering that each sip is probably like 50 cents. <laughs> but anyway, let's go to the third stop. Okay, so the next place we went to is called Teepinter, and I've never been here before. And I asked them what their like specialty drink is, and they said that it's this new seasonal drink, the matcha meets mango. And I don't know, I've had a good amount of matcha mangoes in my time, but this one doesn't look that great because usually it has like three layers. But this one, I don't know, I guess it has kind of like an ombre here, but the mango doesn't look very fresh. This was 550, and let's go ahead and give it a try. Ooh. Oh, whoa, it's really sweet. Like I suspected, the mango part is definitely not like fresh mango. When I first drink it, I get the matcha and milk part at the top and that's like a nice sweetness. But then when you get the like mango syrupy puree thing on the bottom, it makes it like even more sweet and it's just like kind of a sweetness overload. But yeah, this drink is like, okay. So I'd say aesthetic slash specialty, I would not rank this that high because I see a lot of matcha mango drinks. I'd probably give it like a four. And the taste, I mean, it doesn't taste awful. It's just, I've had way better matcha mangoes than this in my lifetime. So I give the taste like a five. I think a five is even being generous. So anyway, let's head to the fourth stop. All right, so we went to the bathroom, we're all good. And we also went to Purple Cow and I also ordered a popcorn chicken because I'm getting a little hungry. Ooh, can you see that? This is turning into a car mukbang. Mmm, <laughs> mm. I like the sauce. It's like um, kind of like a spicy mayo. And then the chicken is really juicy. It has kind of like more of a American popcorn chicken type of breading, but it's pretty good. It's definitely satisfying my fried chicken cravings. Anyway, let's get back into the star of the show, the boba. And this is the ice milk with boba, pudding, and caramel. But I don't know if they put pudding in here because I can only see boba and I, I don't see the pudding. So I guess we'll find out. But anyway, this is really similar to the popular boba spa in SoCal called Half and Half. Like they have a ice milk drink that's pretty much the same thing as this. Mmm. Wow, it's very sweet. It does have a nice caramel flavor for sure, but it's really sweet. <laughs> and at each place, I always get the recommended sweetness because I want the drink in the way they intended it to be. Just like last time though, in part one, the boba is really good. I do see some pudding there. So let me see if I can get some. Um, hello. I got some. The pudding is nice and soft. It's like silky. It's nice. So on the specialty slash aesthetic scale, I don't know that many places that have this drink. I'll give it like a, a seven. And the taste, this is definitely a dessert drink because it's so sweet, but it is very enjoyable. So I'd probably give it like a six. I think if it was like the perfect sweetness, I would maybe give it a seven. But yeah, I'm gonna eat some more of the popcorn chicken and then I'll see you at the fifth stop. Okay, we are at stop number five. I went to Urban Ritual, my favorite boba place in San Francisco. And this is actually not the drink that I usually get, but it is their most unique signature drink, I believe. And this is the creme brulee boba drink. This was $5.75 and it comes with your choice of milk. It has this warm boba on the bottom and then also their house made creme brulee pudding. Now this is what sets Urban Ritual apart from everywhere else. The creme brulee pudding here is literally amazing. Like. 
if you go to Urban Ritual, you have to get the creme brulee pudding. So this drink comes with it since it's the creme brulee drink, but if you want to put it in a different drink of theirs, then yeah, it's going to cost extra. So it comes with this little container thing of their creme brulee torch sugar bits. Oh! So I like to kind of mix the top, or what I like to do is kind of give it a little of this little... I don't know. What you don't want to do is mix at the bottom because if you mix the bottom, the creme brulee pudding, it's going to mix into the drink. So that's really the key. Like if you get the creme brulee pudding, make sure you don't mix it into the drink or else you won't get the full experience of how amazing creme brulee pudding is. Mm. Mm. In part one, we came to Urban Ritual and the boba was not on point that day, but today the boba is on point. It's like super warm and soft and chewy. Mm. Those torch sugar bits are like really crunchy. They definitely add a different kind of contrast from the chewy boba. And it also has this nice like burnt sugar flavor that really resembles creme brulee. Mm. I just got a mouthful of that silky creme brulee pudding. It's literally like melts in your mouth. It's nice and sweet. Oh my gosh. It's literally heaven. I'm getting hyper. My heart is beating so fast. Okay, anyway, specialty slash aesthetic. We're gonna give this a nine. We're gonna give it a nine. You know why? Because nowhere else has this drink. Nowhere else has this amazing creme brulee pudding, okay? And taste, we're also gonna give it a nine. So this creme brulee boba from Urban Ritual has nines across the board, and this isn't even my go-to drink. My go-to drink, if you're wondering, is matcha toffee with creme brulee pudding. They also have a mango sticky rice drink that is really freaking good if you like mango sticky rice. Okay, so now we're gonna head to the sixth stop. Yeah, we're just gonna head to, over to the sixth stop. <laughs> All right, so for stop number six, we went back to Black Sugar Boba because I know that they have some good drinks there, but their jasmine milk tea was not my favorite. So I wanna give them a fair shot. And I asked them what their most unique specialty or popular drink is, and they said the Black Sugar Fresh Milk, which is actually the drink that I remember liking from this place. This one was $4.83 when I paid in the store, and they said make sure to mix it up, which most black sugar slash brown sugar boba places will tell you to mix the drink up. It definitely has a really nice um, black sugar taste to it, like the drink. The boba, the first couple times I had it, I remember it being softer, but this time and the time before this, which was for part two, the boba is still kind of hard, which I'm really, really surprised. Like, don't get me wrong, the boba is still chewy, but it just is a little bit too hard for my liking. As I'm chewing the boba, I can tell it does have this really nice black sugar flavor. And also, since we mix it up into the drink, the milk has a really nice black sugar flavor as well. It's definitely sweet, but it's not like overly sweet. It's just like this really nice level of sweetness. So in terms of the specialty slash aesthetic category, I don't think it's that special just because a lot, a lot, a lot of places have brown sugar boba drinks now. So for specialty, I'll give it like a five. But for taste, I think I'm gonna give this one an eight. I do enjoy drinking it and it's just like a really good version of a classic drink like that. But yeah, I was not expecting to get some brown sugar boba today because brown sugar boba is supposed to be the next episode, but it's okay, I'm not complaining. This is a pretty solid drink. So let's head to the last stop, stop number seven. All right, so we just stopped by our final stop, which is Brew Cha, and I've heard pretty good things about this place. I've never been, and here we have the Taro Latte. Oh, and I'm just realizing that on the sticker, it says free black boba because I did not order boba with my drink, but it has boba in it. So does it come with boba or were they just nice to me or are they having a promotion? I'm not sure, but anyway, this drink was $5.97 and it looks so pretty with that like ube taro marbling on the side. Let's give it a try. Mm. That taro tastes really fresh. When the bits of taro and ube are like really, really small, it's kind of grainy, which I'm not the biggest fan of, but I like when I can get the fresh taro chunks in there. And actually the boba here is pretty solid. Like it's soft and chewy and not hard at all. So overall rating, I think the specialty slash aesthetic gets a pretty high score. Like 
I have seen taro lattes at other places, but not as many, like it's definitely more rare. And the presentation was really nice with the marbling on the outside. So I'd say I give that category an eight. And taste wise, although I do really like the taro chunks and the boba consistency, I'm not sure if I would get this again. So I think I would give it like a six. Six is my lenient answer. <laughs> Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know a lot of you guys are asking for a specialty drink one, so here it is. And make sure you don't miss out on part four by hitting that subscribe button and turning the bell so you get notified when I upload. Give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, check out my Bay Area Boba Guide. It's 26 pages long, has the full ultimate Bay Area Boba Guide that I worked really hard on. On that note, I'll see you guys in the next video, which probably will be pretty soon because it's Vlogmas, I think, at the start of this. Anyway, bye! <laughs> and remember that, oh my God! No! But, yeah, you can see. Oh no, you can't see. This drink is on X Games mode. If that seemed unnatural, it is because I'm just trying to fit in with the kids. Do the kids still say that? I don't know. Anyway.